Hey guys, welcome to my channel Electronics Pedia. In this video, I am going to explain about how to transfer a level signal from one clock domain to another clock domain. So in the last video, I have explained about the basics of clock domain crossing. So if you haven't seen that video, please go and see watch that video. Uh, I have given the link in the description box and also you can click on the i button above. So let's get started. So, uh, so in order to transfer a level signal from clock domain A to clock domain B, so we use a technique called two flop synchronizer or dual synchronizer. Okay. So before that, I will I would like to explain what is the concept of this two flop synchronizer and how do we transfer this you know level signal from one clock domain to another clock domain. So let's take um, signal. I mean, let me draw a clock A. This is my clock A. Uh, this is how it looks like. Okay. Uh, so I have a signal, okay, which is I would like to write as a signal A. This is now I would like to set it. This is my signal A, which is a level signal. Essentially, a level signal is a signal which is it's a kind of a quasi static. Okay, so it has either a zero value or a one value for a elongated period. So it it has sufficient uh, time period for which it stays a constant value. Okay, either it's a zero or a one. So such signals are called level signals. Okay, now I want to transfer this signal from clock domain A to clock domain B. So I'll just draw a clock B. Uh, this can be of any clock. This clock A and clock B are completely asynchronous. Okay, so it need it can be you know multiples of uh, each other or it can be completely asynchronous. So I'm just drawing uh, some clock over here. Okay, and this is like this. I don't know the what is the clock frequency of this or clock period of this. Okay, so now um, when I'm trying to Okay, so this is a signal which needs to be translated into clock, uh, transfer to the clock domain B. So now, uh, if you have see, uh, seen my previous video, so there I have explained about what is the metastability. Okay, so now when I'm trying to capture this signal in the clock domain B, so assume, so now this signal is falling on the in the setup or a hold window of my clock domain B. This is my setup. This is a below to before to the rising edge of the flop it needs to be remain constant so but it is not there because this is signal is changing now similarly this is a th this is a hold window so within this window right so my signal is changing so now so that means when i try to sample this signal in the clock domain b what's happening my output signal assume this is my output signal what have what's happening it's going into some metal stable so we don't know what is the behavior of this signal Right, because this can be zero or one, or it can sample it as zero. So this is this kind of a, in the first window, first flop, right? Like whenever 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 you are sampling, so that time it can go into metastable stable state. So now you don't know the behavior. So this is called a metastable condition. Meta stable. Okay. So it's going into metastable state. So now further down, if you have few more sync, uh, you know, stages of flops. So there, what happens? It can be there, and then it can sample a proper value from here. Okay. So now, what's happening? So you have this signal, and it's going to metastable. Further, it is going to a stable state. Now, this is a basics of what? How do uh, you know uh, the metastable state? Now, I'll just explain how do we take care of such you know metastable state by using a two flops synchronizers or dual synchronizers. So now, uh, what I will do is, I will add an instead of this, I will add one more flop. Okay, so means output of this synchronize, this out, output of this first flop, I am going to feed it to the another flop. So this is my next second uh, flop. So in the second flop, what happens? So my first flop has gone into a metastable. So which value this value will be fed to the second flop. So I don't know the value of this. 
in this uh, uh, it's uncertain so during the second stage output right so what happens this will be sampled properly okay so this is my signal it remains a constant so i'll just draw how exactly this works uh, in terms of the you know flops and all So consider my two stage uh, synchronizer basically it it will have two flops connected back to back to back so this is my d input this is my q this is my d this is my q and i'm just feeding the clocks this is my clock okay so now this is a clock p i'll just take so now uh, my signal is coming this is my signal a which is generated from on the clock A. Now I am trying to sample this into clock domain B using this two stage synchronizer technique. So what happens is my this is my uh, I'll just write it as a uh, M okay DM and this is my DN and this is my QN this is my QM okay so this is my clock B. So what happens when you send a signal from domain a sorry this is my clock domain a right so my first flop of this two stage synchronizer okay so i'll just write it down something in this fashion like this you know like this okay and just to, you know highlight so what happens my first stage of this two stage synchronizer for this is my first stage so this can go into a metastable state okay this can go into a metastable whereas my second stage of the flop this is my second stage right of the flop this will ensure my output is free of metastable and it will have a proper value it's either a zero or a one it will have a proper value this is my so this is my output signal output of the synchronizer so now in my previous video i have explained that metastable right so there what happens is i had explained some concept about metastable mtbf this is the mean time between the failures so now what you should understand from here this this mtbf is that if you are you know implementing of uh, back to back flop right it shouldn't be like you are writing uh, you know right you are writing in a co code right like you know very log code or something it shouldn't be kind of a normal flops but instead this this you know uh, synchronizer should be a standard cells standard cell synchronizer okay it has to be a standard cell synchronizer meaning what i mean by this standard cell synchronizer is these flops should be placed close to each other okay close to each other means what happens is if you implement a normal flop right so what happens is in the synthesis right in the pd backend so they can be placed far you know away from each other okay so that means what happens is essentially if you sample the signal right like i was explaining if it falls in the you know uh, uh, set up or a hold window of this this signal can go into metastable state and now my second stage of the flop if this signal is going to second stage of the flop if this flop is very far away right so then what happens this signal might get diminished okay the signal might get diminished so what happens my signal will die okay and then this flop flop second stage flop may not be able to sample that so that means your mean time between the failure failure is going to decrease okay so that means you will have you, you will your design will have a more chances of failure so that's why while implementing a cdc technique right like when you want to transfer a signal from domain a to domain b which are a level signal which is a essentially a level signal if you want to transfer a level signal from one domain to another domain so make sure that you are considering this standard cell 
this is a you uh, you will have a multiple synchronizers okay so it's like a two stage synchronizer now i have considered the two uh, two stage synchronizer you might have a three stage synchronizer or a four stage synchronizer this is purely dependent upon the the frequency of uh, you know uh, uh, in the frequency of the capture domain okay and also that data rate change uh, as I explained in my previous right like uh, the, the basically this is depends on this mtbf so with this technique so you will be able to transfer a signal from one clock domain to another clock domain provided that signal remain it, it's a level signal it should remain constant okay so this is the idea of two stage synchronizer or how do you transfer a level, a level signal from one clock domain to another clock domain so in the in my next video i am going to explain about how do you transfer a pulse from one clock domain to another clock domain and also i will explain how do you you know uh, uh, you know capture a signal from faster clock domain to slower clock domain and vice versa okay please watch my next video thank you